For a planet as devoid of life as the one in Subnautica seems to be, there have actually been quite a few spaceships that have, one way or another, found their way onto the surface of the sea-covered world. Notably, we actually know of three. The Degassi, the Aurora, and the Sunbeam. Now today, we are going to be looking at the Degassi, one that we never actually see in the game, but one that we learn and hear about quite a lot from different voice logs and PDAs we found. I'll take a look at everything we know about the ship, its crew, and their fates after crashing on this unfortunate world. So if you're interested in some more lore about the Subnautica, strap yourselves in and let's go. Now to start us off, the Degassi was a Mongolian spaceship with some similarities to the Aurora, however it was not actually owned by Altera, the big company that owned the Aurora and commanded the mission, it was actually owned by Torgal Corporation, which is a corporation we know very little about. All we know is that it is much smaller than Altera and it's not a real competitor anymore. Now, According to the report, the Degassi has been taking somewhat of a detour from its usual route which has unfortunately caused it to fly a bit too close to our Subnautica planet and get hit by the Defense Matrix, the same one that shot down Sunbeam and Aurora a bit later, causing the entire ship to crash down onto the planet's surface. This all happened approximately 10 years before our arrival to the planet, but we cannot be exactly sure as we were never given a specific date. Now even though I draw many parallels between the Aurora and the Degassi, the vehicles were actually not that similar at all, whereas the Aurora was quite a large ship, uh, hosting over 100 crew members, the Degassi actually only had 6, 3 of which died immediately upon impact, so we really learn a bit only about the remaining 3. Now these namely are Paul Torgal, Bart Torgal, and Margaret. How the hell do you say this name? Marguerite Maida. These three were the only survivors and they are the ones who build the habitats and the observatories you can find on the planet. It's actually not Aurora survivors as many people surprisingly think, the player is the only person from that crash who actually made it out. Now let's talk about these survivals, let's start with Paul. And Paul is at the time of disappearance, according to the report, 79 years old and is the father to Bart Torgal, our second survivor. We learn that he's actually the majority shareholder in the Torgal Corporation and also happens to be the captain of the Degassi. Regarding his personality, we know that he is very protective of his son and acts very cautiously to everything, recommending the entire crew not to go too far deep into the oceans below them. Our second survivor is Bart Torgal, as already mentioned, the son of Paul, who was 19 at the time of disappearance. Now, apparently he was Paul's only son, effectively making him the heir to the Torgal Corporation, though unfortunately he never was able to get his hands on that position. He was the longest surviving member of the Degassi crew, and he is actually the person you can see in Subnautica's cinematic trailer. All we really know about him is that he was curious and he wanted to study and understand the plant life and the wildlife on the planet of Subnautica more than the remaining survivors, however in the end it didn't really help him as he too eventually succumbed to the Caravirus and died before any rescue could come to him. Now finally we have Marguerite, uh, excuse my pronunciation on that, who was a mercenary hired to protect the Gassi in case of pirate attacks, I suppose in this world we have space pirates and she seemed to have been the most adventurous, being 42 at the time of disappearance, she encouraged Paul and Bart multiple times to set up habitats way deep below the surface and continue exploring deeper and deeper, as she was sure they would eventually be able to find something that would aid them in their survival and eventually escaping the planet. Now, according to everything we know about her, she was a freaking badass, apparently wrestling stalkers to get their teeth and once even fighting a Reaper Leviathan to the point where it almost dies. Now, it is not entirely clear what actually happened to her, but apparently she was last seen hanging on the neck of a Reaper Leviathan after stabbing it with a piece of metal into its neck, and it is presumed that the beast dragged her off into the depths and eventually killed her, but you know, as far as deaths in Subnautica go, that is pretty freaking badass. Now our three member crew from the Degassi was not just contempt at staying at the wreck, which presumably is somewhere near the floating island where you can find their habitat, though unfortunately 
most likely because of the sea currents and the almost a decade of time between the crashes, no more parts of the Degassi can be found around there. They decided to build several bases along the world, bases that you can actually find and explore, uh, which is how we acquire most of the data logs and PDAs regarding the conversations. There are three notable locations for the bases, which you can discover, and technically there is even a secret fourth one. Now the first one that you will most likely come across, depending on how you explore the game, is going to be the floating island one. Now this one actually consists of three separate structures, one at the very bottom of the island, which consists of multiple multipurpose rooms stacked on top of each other, and then two observatories, one on each hill. Interestingly enough, this base also has a large grow bed, in fact several of them, where you can find all kinds of different plants which can be used as food, such as marble melons, Chinese potatoes or lantern fruit. Now the real reason why this base has been abandoned by them was because they were simply running out of food and because of the considerable rain, they were just unable to maintain and sustain a good food supply. So as I already mentioned, the mercenary pushed them and encouraged them to go dive deeper and explore the rest of the ocean. Now the second base that you will probably come across is the one in the Jelly Shroom Cave, though like I already mentioned, depending on your exploration, this could be the first one you come across. And this one is located in the pinkish purplish uh, scary snake filled cave that is pretty close to the sea shallows actually. And it consists of the main base structure, which is quite extensive with several corridors and multi-purpose rooms as well as observatories, and then several smaller platforms with floodlights which surround the area. Now the reason why they eventually abandoned this one was because it wasn't fully structurally functional even despite the reinforcements you can clearly see on the inside and would start to cave under the water pressure and they were forced to evacuate it before it completely gave away. If you actually visit it right now, it is fully filled with water, flooded and full of stingrays. Now finally their last base you can find in the game is in the Grand Reef and this was, as far as we know, the final base they ever built. This is the place where both Paul and Marguerite eventually died even though both from different reasons, so it might not have been the best idea to set the base up here, but if you yourself want to explore it, you will find it within the Grand Reef on one of the rocks surrounded by many of the floating orbs and crab squids. Surprisingly enough, the reason why they abandoned this base wasn't because of the constant power outages or because of the lack of any real sustainable resource in the area, but because what is presumed to be a Reaper Leviathan attacked the base, essentially rendering it uninhabitable and forcing them to escape. Now a few interesting facts to kind of finish this video off. Some of you may remember that I said that there are effectively four bases which they build, as in the cinematic trailer we can see that the final one is actually built in the sea shallows, but I didn't think to mention it earlier because it is technically not discoverable in the game and was probably only built for the purpose of the cinematic trailer. Also, in regards to Paul's death, it is implied that he followed lights that he saw deeper and deeper into the darkness of the Grand Reef and it wasn't quite known whether he died from the lack of oxygen or being attacked by the Leviathan to destroy their base. However, in the cinematic trailer, it seems a lot more likely that he was actually ambushed by a crab squid. Players have actually done a fair bit of theorizing into whether it was actually a Reaper Leviathan that attacked the base in, and not a sea dragon as they have compared it to a Kraken in their logs and you know, the Reaper Leviathan does not exactly look like a Kraken to me, but there is no further evidence to really support any of these and when you slow the recordings down, the audio is just a distorted Reaper Leviathan roar, so you know, it kind of makes it seem like it was in fact a Reaper Leviathan. Anyways. That was all I was able to find on the Degassi. Now there is actually more, and yes, we could talk about the individual personalities, and we can discuss the individual talks the crew has with each other, but I just think the best way to experience this is for you to go in-game, collect the PDAs, and find it out yourself. I also don't want this video to be 60 minutes long, so, you know, I picked what I considered interesting and discarded the rest. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If there is any fact, or any theory that I didn't cover and maybe that you want to propose or that you think would be interesting to people watching this, make sure to leave that down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, you know, maybe consider leaving a like, comment or subscribing, it would all be very much appreciated. I wish you all a beautiful rest of today and I'm gonna see you in whatever next video I make. Bye bye.